Hey everyone, this is that I had to make and this is a video to answer the uh, new question that's been coming up. Will the Xbox One or PlayStation 4 be susceptible to the yellow light of death or RROD, uh, red ring of death? Now, are they going to have the exact same name? No, because our community is going to come up with more clever names. Uh, for whatever colored lights will be on these new consoles. However, I have to say the underlying issue, which is exactly the same for the Red Ring of Death and the Yellow Light of Death, uh, which is solder ball cracks. Um, I have to safely say that I do not believe these new consoles will be as prone to the problem, and here's why. Now, most of you guys know that I'm firstly a techie, a gamer secondly. But I have made a nice little presentation for you guys to edumacate you guys on what is a die shrink, why it matters, and a little history lesson on it. So now we're going to first start off with one of my favorite charts. Now I made these fancy schmancy charts in Excel, um, so it looks pretty. Yes. So we're going to start off with the PlayStation 3, which has a lot of fucking consoles. Now, as you can see here, from left to right is chronological order between the models at when they were released. And the orange line represents the CPU process, the blue line represents the GPU process. In the spots where you see only orange, assume that there's a blue line behind it. So, Starting off with the CECHA model, which was the 60 gigabyte PlayStation 3, you can see that it's a 90 nanometer process for both the CPU and GPU. My, uh, Sony had continued this up until the CECHG slash H models, which is when they introduced the 40 gigabyte PlayStation 3. You can see that the GPU remained a 90 uh, nanometer process, whereas the cell processor went down to a 65 nanometer process. Now, before I continue, let me explain what a die shrink does. A die shrink makes the chip smaller, which then in turn reduces the amount of power required to power the chip, as well as reduces the heat the chip gives off. It also makes the chip cheaper to produce. So it's a win-win-win situation when they do a die shrink. Um, so, Throughout the console's lifespan, you ever you may wonder why is it that the PlayStation 3 got smaller, um, used less power, you know, they were able to make it like have a smaller heat sink. It's entirely due to die shrinks. So, starting with the 40 gig PS3, they die shrank the cell processor but left the RSX GPU at 90 nanometers. Then, starting with the CECHJ model, which is actually a revision of the 40 gig. Um, they bumped both of them to the 65 nanometer process. So now on both fronts, you're reducing the energy usage and the heat that it gives off, which it thus in turn makes it more reliable. The CECH K, L, and M model, which is the revised 80 gig PS3. This is the 80 gig PS3 that doesn't have a... Um, backwards compatibility whatsoever. This is the 80 gig PS3 that has two USB ports. It's basically exactly the same as the 40 gig uh, CECH J model. Now, I do have a fucking typo, lucky me, but the CECH P and Q models, which is actually the 160 gig PS3, this is the, the last fat model they made, is exactly the same as the 80 gig PS3 that was before it and the 40 gig PS3 that was before it. Now this is where things get very interesting and very clever. Now I have say, stated this in the past, I have stated this in previous videos that the PlayStation 3 Slim was getting the yellow light of death. And a bunch of you assholes out there decided, no, it's better, it's more reliable. Well, I told you guys, the first generation Slims were more prone to the yellow light of death than all se you know sequential models due to this. The CECH 20XXA and B model, so the XX can be a bunch of different numbers, whatever. Um, the A and B stands for either the 120 gig model or the 250 gig model. So if your PS3 Slim has a 20 in it, um, it is more prone to the yellow light death because 
they kept the GPU process at 65 nanometers while bumping down the cell processor at 45 nanometers. So it, it still, the, the graphics card still generates the same amount of heat and uses the same amount of power as the 160 gig fat PS3. Then Sony changed it with the CECH21. So if your PS3 Slim has a 21 on it, um, it will actually be the very first PlayStation 3 that is more reliable than the rest. And that's because they bumped the GPU down to 40 nanometers while keeping the cell processor at 45 nanometers. So now from this point on, if you buy a PlayStation 3 that has 21 or later, it will be the most reliable PlayStation 3 model Sony has released. <sighs> we got to breathe more here. But um, going on from the 25, the 30, and the 40. The 40 is the super slim. That's the 12 gig model, the 250 gig model, and the 500 gig model. It's the same friggin' thing. So what we will show off are the heat sinks. And you can see how Sony has changed them over the course of uh, a while. First one I have up here is actually the, the original 60 gig model PS heatsink. It's a monstrosity of a thing. Um, if you look at the one with uh, those little copper like looking devices, those are known as heat pipes. So heat pipes, what they do is they actually help spread the heat quicker across the surface of the heatsink. Um, the two areas where you see the white goop, those are known as uh, 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 heat blocks, or you know, if it's water cooling, they call them water blocks. But basically, it's the you know the central, the hottest point of the heat sink will be there, where it's actually touching the 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 heat spreader of the chips, and thus it will spread out the the heat. Now, the one with three heat pipes is for the cell processor, which is much larger, than is for the RSX, which is the two heat pipes. This is why the PlayStation 3 has the OLED death. The heatsink is too small for the graphics card, and the graphics card has been traced, and there's tons of evidence for this. The graphics card is the area where the solder cracks happen the most. So if you go to any place that will reball your uh, PS3, nine out of 10 times, they're gonna reball the GPU only. And that's because the heatsink is too freaking small. Sony, it took them a very long time before they actually solved this. And as I said, if you have a second generation or later slim, which you know I showed you in the previous chart with the 21 or later, um, you're not going to run into the problem. So now let me just show you off the, um, you have the 40 gig PlayStation 3 and on. So this is the 40, the 80, and the 160 has this design, which um, it was more efficient than the previous, but then again, they shrunk down the heat sinks when they shrunk down the chips, um, which still, the heat sinks were inadequate to cool down these uh, processors. So then we went to the uh, slim, slim heat sink. I couldn't really get a good photo for it, but the slim heat sink is even smaller, thus, why the first generation slim is more prone to the OLED death because the chip didn't, you know, the heat sink shrank, but the chip didn't. So it's going to have the same problem. But again, if you have a CECH 20 or uh, 21 or later, you're good to go. So now that's Sony. Sony had plenty of friggin' models. Now it's time to dive deep into Xbox 360. Now, a lot of people make the claim that the Xbox 360 is more prone to failure than the PlayStation 3. This may or may not be true, but since there isn't any actual evidence towards this, from my personal experience, I've been witnessing more PS3s dying than Xbox 360s. Uh, maybe it's because my, I know more people with PS3s than Xbox 360s, but I've, I've honestly seen more of the problem. So. On this chart, this is the Xbox 360 die shrinks. Now, I can't really uh, dive into which models had them because there is a lot of trickiness to it, but we'll break it down into the code names for the different chipsets. So, the very first chipset was the Zen Xenon, or Xeon, or however you want to pronounce it. And that was where both uh, CPU and GPU were 90 nanometers. Then with the Zypher, uh, they kept it the same. Then they bumped it down with Falcon. Falcon is where they shrunk down the, the CPU, but they kept the GPU at the same size. The Opus is actually a revised version of the Xenon, and the Xenon uh, was the one that was most 
most prone to the problem of having um, the solder joint cracks. Thus, you got the red ring of death. So what Microsoft would do to fix it, they would actually replace your motherboard with an Opus. So that way your CPU is actually a smaller uh, uh, CPU, thus less heat and somewhat patch the problem. It didn't really fix it. Um, and they also bumped up the heat sink, which I'll actually show that in a photo soon. Then when people really started noticing that the red ring of death was really diminishing and wasn't becoming a problem was with the Jasper board. And the Jasper boards when they shrunk both the CPU and GPU down to 65 nanometers. Now it gets really, really interesting with when Microsoft announced the slim model. That's when they started with the Trinity and later on they changed it to the Corona. Now the Trinity bumped it down to 45 nanometers, but it was no longer two different chips. They did what is known as a heterogeneous um, uh, chip design. And that's where they put the CPU and GPU on one physical chip. They still have separate dies, but they're on one physical chip and one heat sink. Um, and this is where basically reliability is awesome. Um, you know, it's not gonna be a problem. Now with the Corona and the Trinity, the difference between them is the HANA chip um, is actually integrated into the uh, CPU and GPU on the Corona versus the Trinity. So the Corona is uh, a bit more reliable. Oh, this is an Xbox 360 original model. Now, this is a picture actually of the revised heatsink. If you can just imagine the top area where you see a heat pipe coming from the right and going all the way up to the left, uh, top left corner, that entire heatsink was later on added to the Xbox 360 after the Red Ring of Death really became uh, dominant. Um, the left heatsink that's separate, that's the CPU heatsink. The le uh, right one is the GPU. Now, the reason why the GPU one is so freaking small is because the DVD drive is on directly on top of it. So the way Microsoft redesigned it is to use a heat pipe that just you know spews out of that particular chip and goes to the left and uh, is, is sitting directly behind the, uh, the CPU heatsink. Um, this, for the most part, patched most of the problems. This, combined with the fact that the uh, revised motherboard generates less heat, made it more reliable. So now let's go with the Xbox 360 Slim. Now the Xbox 360 Slim, as you can see, it's just one heatsink, one fan. It, that makes it extremely quiet and extremely reliable. The next generation consoles, I do not foresee them having the same problems. Why? My current gaming rig, which consists of an i7 3770K, which is an IV bridge processor, and a GTX 690, um, they both are based off of a 22 nanometer die. So if you can imagine right now, the consoles, the smallest size console processor is 40 nanometers, now we have processors that are 22 nanometers. You can see that they're generating less heat, consuming less energy, and they're just overall more efficient, more reliable, and you're better off with the smaller dies. So Xbox, uh, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, I am estimating they will probably be a, a 35 nanometer, I mean a 32 nanometer or a 22 nanometer. They might start out at 40, but I, I definitely think it's gonna be 40 or under. So this will mean that these consoles will not be as hot as their predecessors were. And yeah, I do not foresee any problems like this on the next generation. Take care guys, look out for future content.